Julius Hirsch was born on April 7, 1892. He would spend most of his life in the German city of Karlsruhe, where he played his favorite pastime, football. When he turned 10, Hirsch joined Karlsruhe Fußballverein, founded by Walter Bossemann, a Jew. He was immediately successful in the youth leagues playing for KFV, and when he was 17, Hirsch earned his first cap for the senior team. On the KFV squad, Julius quickly became known for his hard work on the left side of the field. He was noted for his fancy footwork that allowed him to go through entire defenses and his potent left foot that often found itself scoring goals. Through football, Hirsch would become a German hero, but he would soon be forgotten. From der Mannschaft to Auschwitz, The Julius Hirsch Story by Will Gibson and J.P. Schimmer One match, the 1910 Karlsruhe Derby, KFV fought for placement in the German Championship Finals. This is that match. It was one of many matches that young Hirsch made his presence known in. After this match, KFV would go on to win the 1910 German Championship. The film of this match is thought to be the oldest known footage of football. Rich squeezed in by poor and the ticket list scaled the stadium walls to watch the match. Today, Germany has only three cities with more than one title-winning team, Berlin, Munich, and Karlsruhe. Hirsch, along with his fellow teammates Gottfried Fuchs and Fritz Froder, became Germany's famous soccer unit. They would go on to win many titles and many fans, and by World War I, they were among Germany's greatest sportsmen. Hirsch and Fuchs debuted for the German national team, De Mannschaft, in 1911. His performance on the pitch sealed his legacy as one of the greats. Hirsch won another national championship with Firth, a team in northern Bavaria. He was the first German player to win a title with more than one team, which made him one of Germany's most celebrated players. He also got to travel to the 1912 Summer Olympics in Stockholm, Sweden. This was his last time to play football before he fought in World War I. When the Great War rolled around, Julius and his brothers proudly enlisted. They were excited to serve their country. It was a spirit instilled in them by their father, who had fought in the Franco-Prussian War, the conflict responsible for the creation of Germany. Every one of Julius's brothers, himself included, received the Distinguished Iron Cross. All second class except for Rudolf, who received first class. After the Great War, Hirsch returned to his previous life in Germany. He went on to play for football clubs Firth and KFV again. He married a Christian woman, Ellen Hauser, and started his own family. Julius grew older, and when he got too old to play football, he turned to coaching it. One morning in 1933, Hirsch read the Sportsbericht Stuttgart. It read, The undersigned clubs gladly and definitively place themselves at the disposal of the national government's efforts in the field of physical training and are prepared to make every effort to cooperate. In the interest of this cooperation, they are willing to affect consequences in any way, particularly as regards to the issue of the removal of Jews from sports clubs. Hirsch was outraged by this. Immediately, he wrote a letter to KFV. My dear sirs, today in Sportrecht Stuttgart, I read that the big clubs, including KFV, have taken the decision to remove their Jewish members. In the letter, he reminded KFV of his long affiliation and with heartache resigned. In ending the letter, Hirsch said, I do not wish to leave unmentioned the fact that in this bully of a German nation, which is so hated today, there are still decent people, and perhaps even more German Jews, whose national loyalty is both evident in the way they think and proven by their deeds and with the lifeblood they have shed. Julius Hirsch was one of these German Jews. He was famous as a footballer and served his country in World War I. But his home, Germany, forgot about this and eventually turned against him. It should be noted that Hirsch and his friend Gottfried Fuchs were the first Jewish players to ever earn caps for the German national team, and there have never been any others. It wasn't long after this situation that Julius went to Paris. He went looking for new opportunities and was particularly interested in moving his wife and children to the City of Light. He was in Paris for months. His time was mostly spent looking for work, he responded to ads, and probably went to soccer clubs looking for a job as well. However, he never found one. 
November 3rd was the day that Hirsch departed from France back to Karlsruhe. However, when the train arrived in Karlsruhe, he was not on it. His family was very worried when a week later, different news spread like wildfire. November 9th and the days following it are remembered as Kristallnacht, the night when Germany's anti-Semitism went off the deep end. Spurred on by the assassination of a Nazi politician in Paris by a Jewish teen, Nazi soldiers went ballistic, destroying synagogues, Jewish-owned storefronts, and planning coordinated attacks on Jews that ended with the victims being deported to concentration camps. After a month, there was still no word on Julius's whereabouts, and then finally, in December, Ellen received news of him. He was in a French mental institution. Hirsch hadn't been in Germany during the terrifying Kristallnacht, and when he heard about it, he believed that Ellen and their children had been killed. At the next stop in a small town in Paris, he got off the train and wandered off through the town. He was found later in a rock quarry, he had a knife and was covered in blood. He'd had a mental breakdown and tried to kill himself, believing he didn't have a family to return to. When Julius finally returned to Karlsruhe, the first signs of the final solution started appearing. Jews were being deported from Karlsruhe, however, since Hirsch was married to a Christian woman, he, along with his children, was given a higher status than other Jews. However, as more and more Jews were deported, the Hirsch family was becoming less and less associated with the Aryan population. Possible deportation was always looming over them, and they began to plan for it. There were plans made to escape. However, none of the plans could totally accommodate the family. Eventually, a decision was made. Julius and Ellen would get a divorce, and their children would be baptized. The plan was set into motion when, in December of 1942, Julius was sent out of the Hirsch family house, and Ellen changed her name back to Hauser. Esther Hirsch was almost 15 and still not baptized when Julius was ultimately going to be deported. March 1, 1943, when the day Julius Hirsch boarded the train for Auschwitz, two days later, Esther turned 15, and within a few days of her birthday, she received a postcard from Julius. He had sent it when his train had stopped in Dortmund. It remains unclear whether Hirsch ever actually made it to Auschwitz. His name doesn't appear on the books at the infamous death camp. After the war, he was declared dead as of the 8th of May, 1943. In 2005, the Deutsche Fußballbund, Germany's governing body of football, introduced the Julius Hirsch Prize. This prize is awarded by the DFB to individuals who represent the sanctity of human dignity and in opposition anti-Semitism and racism, who oppose the exclusion of people and for promoting diversity in the face of discrimination and xenophobia. Julius Hirsch is a German and Jewish champion. And crawling on the planet's face some insects called the human race lost in time and lost in space